Whether you're playing in custom matches, battling in the cash cups, or are just trying to gain some arena points, knowing how to play the early game is vital for success. There are consequences to dying early in competitive modes, and so a lot more care needs to be put into how you play your drop spot. Compared to regular matches, the approach at the start of the game is much more organized and thought out. What's going on everybody, my name is Dan, and in this video, we'll be going over how to play those sweaty early games in competitive matches. Since most people like solos, we'll focus mainly on that mode, but there will still be a few tips and tricks you can take away for your trios games. We'll also refer you to a couple of pro player examples to help reinforce some of the aspects that you can start using to improve your chances of winning the drop. Speaking of winning, check out Instapro, our amazing coaching system where you get to play with some of the best Fortnite coaches in the world. We also offer up to five free sessions upon purchasing the membership, so click that link in the description and drop a like on this video. Thanks! So how do you choose a landing spot? Well, you have to decide what you value. The amount of loot, available mobility, location, and familiarity are just some of the attributes players tend to look for in a landing spot. For example, if an area has a high amount of loot, like Happy Hamlet or Paradise Palms, you're more likely to get the items you need to help carry you to the endgame. But at the same time, with how valuable loot is, you're more likely to be contested by other players at those spots. And all that gear won't mean anything if you die going through several opponents just to get it. That's why there aren't really any bad POIs in competitive matches. Even if a spot is objectively poor, it's less likely to be contested by other players. That means they're much easier to survive in compared to some of the hotter zones. And remember, survival is the name of the game here, so don't feel the need to leave your landing spot with kills every game. Landing in secluded spots is a perfectly viable strategy. When it comes to choosing a landing spot, it's a good idea to try and stick with a single location. If you ever watch any pros play arena or tournaments, you'll notice that they like to land at the same location almost every game. Sure, they might change it up every now and then, but by landing at the same spot repeatedly, they're able to learn the ins and outs of that location to a T. Good familiarity is probably one of the most important aspects that contribute to successful early games. Not knowing where chests spawn or what buildings have lots of floor loot can end up being the downfall to your early game. Even things as simple as knowing the efficient paths to take when looting can go a long way. You also have to know the specific spots to pull your parachute while dropping. This makes a huge difference in your ability to land and secure a location before your opponents can. In order to learn all of these things, it can take a lot of practice landing at the same spot. If you want to learn a spot because you like what it offers, like the loot or mobility it has, spend some time in Playground going over the landings, loot spawns, and the loot paths you'll be taking there. Pro players do this all the time whenever a new location gets released. Tifu will go over block locations every time it gets changed. There's just a huge advantage you can get over your opponents by learning the zone. There's a lot more that goes into the landing spot the players choose. Things like rotation paths and flanking routes are also things to take into consideration. Keep those in mind, but focus mainly on familiarity. If you ever decide to change landing spots, either because the map changed or you're just looking for something better, you need to learn that spot in playground and practice dozens of drops. If you don't, you're not getting the full advantage of swapping to a better spot. Let's take a look at an example of Booga landing at his favorite spot. It shows in several ways how important knowing your landing spot is. With how often he's practiced at Lucky Landing, he knows where to aim for a perfect drop every time. In this case, it enables him to land a solid 4 seconds before his opponent, which gives him the opportunity to get loot and make the first push. When Booga pushes over, he knows to farm the dumpling mascot on the restaurant roof, since it gives over 100 metal really quickly. Not only that, but he knows the exit his opponent can build out of is right next to him, so he places a ramp to block a potential push while he farms the dumpling. Booga eventually pushes in and interrupts the dude trying to drink a chug jug. After a nice pump shot from his opponents, things get dicey for Booga, but in the end he outplays his opponent and gets the elim despite being outgunned. Look at this kid's RNG. In this case, the better landing didn't make too much of a difference in timing, but it did allow Booga to go on the offensive before his opponent could. Everything else, from what he farmed to the route he attacked from, all stems from his extensive knowledge of the location. And in the end, it's what helped him get the Look kill despite RNG. being outgunned. Okay, let's talk about early game fights. How to play them out, when to take them, and when to avoid them. 
All right, so first and foremost, you should always be paying attention to where exactly the opponents in your area are dropping. You need that information not only to be able to defend yourself, but also in case you want to make an aggressive play. Don't only consider their initial drop spot, but also their potential looting path as well. If you can, try to keep a mental image of how they're rotating throughout the area. That way, you can predict their location and get set up in flank spots that are likely to catch them off guard. And that's how a lot of early game fights in competitive lobbies are done. Players like to get set up on rooftops or hide around corners in a way that lets them get the drop on their opponents. Getting in just a few rifle shots, a sniper, or anything else that can beam a player before they start building will greatly shift the fight to your favor. Let's take a look at how Booga uses these early game strats to his advantage. In another lucky landing drop, he made sure to take notice of where enemies landed. Using that information, Booga knows that this guy is going to peak real soon. He sets up in a location where he can dish out some surprise damage. Using third-person peeking, he's able to get a full view of his opponent through the window without having to show himself. Then, he just waits patiently for the opening and goes for the kill. Booga probably wasn't even expecting to get the kill here. He was just trying to land a hit or two and deal enough damage to get an edge in the fight. But instead, with some good aim and cooperating Bloom, he gets the kill with almost no effort. Okay, so another important aspect of the early game is how loot RNG affects whether or not you can take fights. In some matches, you'll get a shotgun and shields right off the bat. As we all know, those items are really useful in a one-on-one -on -one engagement. But in other games, your loot at the start might be less than ideal. If you get the right items quicker than normal, then there's a better chance your opponents are going to have worse loot than you. You can use this info to your advantage and take fights sooner than you normally would. If you don't have the right items just yet, that usually just means that you need to keep looting. Sometimes you'll have to make do with what you have. If that's just a rifle, for instance, getting set up on high ground and keeping your distance would be the ideal way to look for a fight. But usually, fighting without a proper inventory is just not worth it. Another thing to consider before taking a fight is your opponent's positioning. For example, if you're looting Paradise Palms and somebody is set up on the hotel roof, pushing them head-on might be too costly. You'll get shot at as you try to climb, and you'll end up losing a ton of mats. At that point, it's better to wait for them to either move or to just ignore the fight and leave. Just one last side note on taking fights that relates only to in-game tournaments. With the Cash Cups, you have a maximum of 15 games within the time limit. Without setup, it's natural to start running out of time if you've been making it to end games often. So every now and then, you can just have a throwaway game. Anytime players have these, they usually just W key and try to get as many kills as they can. If they die, there's no big fuss because they can queue up for another game that they wouldn't have gotten to play anyways. We wouldn't recommend doing this unless there's only time for one more game that you can queue into. Like, if there are 15 minutes left as you get into a game, you could go for as many kills as possible in 5 minutes, then use the remaining 10 to find the last match that you'll take more seriously. If this is a lot to wrap your head around, don't worry about it too much. It doesn't have too much of an impact. Playing and taking every game seriously is what you should be focusing on mainly. Rotating out of your starting zone and into the mid game is pretty simple. However, there are a few things you definitely need to consider before you begin your exit. First, the zone's position. If your landing spot gets circle favored at the start, you won't have to worry about the storm approaching for a while. With that, you have much more freedom and time to get into engagements. But if you have to make a long trek to the next zone, that time you have to fight significantly decreases. Sure, you could always take fights with the storm approaching, but you'll risk taking storm damage and setting yourself behind on getting a good position in the next zone. As you're moving to the next circle, you need to consider how other players in surrounding areas will rotate. There's usually going to be at least one player or team rotating in from each surrounding zone. While it's possible to catch players off guard during their rotation, starting a fight as the storm is approaching is typically a bad idea. So if you do end up encountering someone, you're usually just better off getting behind cover and trying to make it into the safe zone. Lastly, as always, you want to use whatever map mobility is available when rotating out of your starting zone. Whether that's rifts, drift boards, or the newly buffed peppers that last for a minute, taking anything is almost always worth it when compared to running on foot. Not only does using mobility allow you to get into position faster, but in most scenarios, it keeps you safe. A majority of players get caught out and die when running on foot during their rotates, so it's very important to plan your rotates with map mobility in mind. Early games are probably one of the hardest things to practice for. Unlike with end games having zone wars, there aren't any good simulations available to practice early games. With the sheer number of drop locations on the map, it's basically impossible to perfectly know more than a few. So it's super important that you try to stick with a single location for your competitive games. That way, how you land, loot, and fight in that area can become second nature to you. 
Always look for an advantageous position before starting a fight, whether by setting up on natural high ground or using your camera to look around corners. That way, you can get into engagements in a way that starts the fight off in your favor. But before you do get into a battle, take note of the safe zone and how far you have to rotate. Don't be afraid of avoiding the fight and going for a good position in the next circle instead. Remember, there isn't much point in winning an early game fight if you can't make it to the end game because of it. Alright guys, that's all we have for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys like this video, make sure that you subscribe to our channel because we have more stuff coming at you every day just like it. Also, if you want to follow me on social, you can find me at, at Daniel Ammerman. Thanks again for watching guys. See you out there.